Welcome to Brian Sews. Today I would like to show you my FAW 1473 CD. I picked this sewing machine up off of Craigslist. It was listed for $35 and then when I arrived they wouldn't take anything over $25. Um, the part that was broken was <coughs> the the bar that the, the presser foot bar, we'll call it, up inside the machine had been oiled with some of that white lithium oil stuff that turns into kind of concrete after a while. And so what would happen is when you put the foot down, the foot wouldn't actually go all the way down. So your fabric would just kind of drift all over the place. So it didn't really work very well, to be, tr to be sure. Um, the 1473 is a really cool machine. It is one, so it is the first line of really computerized machines that Foff put out. There's, there's a, a few different numbers in the series. Um, this one with the CD has the creative designer attachment, which is a little box that allows you to create your own stitches, basically one stitch at a time, and it plugs in over here. I, I, I think probably a few people at the time got really into creating their own stitches, and most people never used the feature. So, um, the machine has you know all the bells and whistles that you would expect from a machine today. Even it's it's really was quite a high-end machine at the time. I think the original owner paid twenty-two hundred dollars for it, and that was back in nineteen ninety-two, perhaps. Um, you've got your needle up and down. You're so slow. This is your buttonhole button. When you're sewing buttonholes, you need to push that button at different points, and your uh, reverse stitch button. You have your bobbin low indicator light here, which is a pretty awesome feature. Um, over here you have your standard buttons. All these buttons down here at the bottom mostly are memory, uh, pattern reverse, pattern stop and start, and start at the beginning of the pattern, I guess. Um, up here, of course, you've got all your different stitches. This machine does an impressive 177 stitches, including uh, your Jaguar, your elephant, your alligator, kangaroo, and hot air balloon, and your crowns. Um, there's a whole, there's, there really is a lot of stitches on this machine. One of the gripes I have, <clears throat> another gripe I have, is when I'm sitting at this machine, I'm sitting above it, and the stitches that I really need are these utilitarian stitches, we'll say, on the top here, and I have to like kind of get underneath to see what they are, so it's kind of a pain. Um, they should have started down here and gone up, whatever. So power buttons here in the front. This machine was actually made in West Germany. That tells you, kind of dates it for you. Let's get it threaded up and I want to show you some sewing. It threads very similar to um, a modern FOF. It, it, it's really, in all intents and purposes, really quite modern. I'm just sitting below the machine here, so it's kind of a little different. Oh, there's my bobbin indicator light came on because there's no bobbin. And actually there's no needle either. Here is a needle. Put that in. We'll use the needle threader. And I have perfect success using these larger metal bobbins. Of course, if you use the metal bobbin, your bobbin low indicator light will not work. So, it's a trade-off, I guess. I tend to like the metal bobbins better than the plastic ones. All right, draw up our thread here. Okay, I'm going to zoom the camera in so you can see what's going on. Okay, this looks like a great angle. You can see the display screen and the foot. So, there you go. This machine doesn't do foot up and down or any of that business, which I actually find much easier to use. It does, have, of course, have the IDT. So, the first stitch you're on, of course, is the straight stitch. And the machine just has such a solid feel to it. Let's try some of the uh, 
Let's see, let's see what kind of uh, satin stitch this machine does. Lower the stitch length here. Eh, say 0.3, let's see. I don't have the right foot on for that, so. Yeah, let's, let's go a little higher than 0.3. <laughs> We're just gonna make lumps. back on the side here. <laughs> you can get it. Yeah, pretty decent satin stitch. Let's try to make it wider. Let's do a nice wide satin stitch. That's a true test of a machine. You know, and if we're truly testing it, we should put the right foot on. Oh, no, this is this is the right foot. Let's see. You want for, for any kind of satin stitching or stitches where you've got a lot of uh, thread building up, you definitely want the foot that has the open in the back. So actually that is fine. And since I'm not really worried about, sometimes the IDT, when you're trying to do precise stitching, um, doesn't necessarily help you. IDT is great for feeding fabric and keeping your layers together. Um, decorative stitching it is not great for. It actually impedes the machine when you're reverse stitching, so it can mess up your patterns. Let's see here. What is this? So this is stitch 12. I wonder what stitch... Stitch 10 is your standard zigzag. Maybe we should go to stitch 10 and try that out. Decrease our stitch length a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So while this is a robust machine, it is definitely not a machine that you, I wouldn't be sewing jeans on it. It is, you know, it's, it's robust, it's strong, but it's not a machine you'd want to really beat up that hard. You know, other machines are much better for that type of work. Um, let, but you know, in, in saying that, let's, let's put this denim together and make some thick, thick denim for it to sew through and see how it does. I haven't actually done this before, I'm not here. Let's see. My thing is I'm always interested to see how it goes up and down hills. <coughs> oh, let's go back to stitch one. Oh, that's pretty good. And usually you'd be stitching with a much longer stitching thick fabric like this. <clears throat> Put that under there. So as you can see, it really does do really well. I think probably times when you'd have problems with it are like um, flat fell seam intersections and things like that. And that's really where most machines would have problems. Um, this is also using a lightweight thread. I haven't tried putting, you know, some real heavy thread in the machine. Usually that's where you, you run into the most problems is with the thread weight. Um, something that's nice about the machine is with the little display here. Oh, let me, sh let me move the camera so you can really see it. <clears throat> Most of your stitches are just at a finger's touch away. So, like if I'm on zero, zero, which is probably your main stitch that you use, uh, that's your center needle, I can go up one button and that's your zigzag stitch. Um, 
Stitch number one is your left needle adjustable. This this is a pain in the butt. If you want a right needle, you've got to like scroll all the way, all the way over. Um, something else that doesn't make sense to me is that this machine, so okay, so we, let's change the stitch parameters. So we're on stitch one, right hand side, uh, six length, six millimeter length. Let's go back to zero, zero. And then we go back to stitch one again, it doesn't save the stitches. Why didn't this machine save your stitches? Um, <clears throat> even, you know, just until it was turned off at least. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, let me just show you the accessory case. Move the camera down here a little bit. The accessory case is, it, it looks very similar to your modern Foff's accessories. Um, place for bobbin, feet, that's your buttonhole attachment. That's a little brush. You've got a little open spot under here for the oil that no one ever uses. It leaks all over everything. Something you probably can't tell. Let me come back here a little bit. Something you probably can't tell looking at the machine is that the entire housing is actually metal. The, this uh, this plastic pan this plastic panel here is plastic. This case is plastic, but all this is metal, which is pretty cool. It's um, but doesn't necessarily make the machine too heavy to carry. So, so that's the Fa 1473 CD. I know this wasn't like a thorough review of all of its features, but um, gives you a good look at it, and you can see how it sews and, and whatnot. And maybe if you find one, it can be, as, be one of your favorite sewing machines. All right, have a good day.